Hey Canucks fans, there were new forward lines rolled out at practice today and maybe one or two more injuries. I'm Canuck Clay and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, September the 27th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely and trustworthy. Thanks to everyone who joined me last night for my live stream. Again, tonight, we're going to do it all again, starting at 11 p.m. Pacific time. Hope you join me right here on YouTube. Now, a lot of what we talked about last night was Brock Besser's injury and maybe an injury to Ilya Mikheyev. We weren't sure if you'd be practicing today. Well, we know that Besser and Mikheyev both did not practice today. Besser's going to be out three or four weeks, so we can't expect him for almost a month or so. Mikheyev, we were hopeful, but he wasn't practicing. Also, Tyler Myers wasn't practicing. And then there was also an injury that happened during the, the practice that I'll talk about in a second. So let's get in the lines. By the way, I was thinking about this. Why is there such obsession, obsession might be too strong of a word, but why is there such an interest in the Canucks lines and deep pairings? It's only the first week of training camp, really, or the first week of practice after training camp. There's only been one or two exhibition games, yet I don't know about you, but I'm constantly checking. I'm, I'm ex maybe not constantly checking. That's not the right thing, but I'm really, really interested. As soon as the players hit the hit the ice, whether it's at a practice or a pregame skate. I'm really interested in seeing what the line combinations and the deep pairings are. So much so that Thomas Drance and Brendan Batcher always race to kind of get the to get the line combos out on their Twitter account. So let me know if it's just me. But put in the comments below. Do you actually get really excited and really intrigued and interested in the line combos and in the deep pairings, even if it's you know the first week of preseason hockey? Are you like me in that you? Are really interested in that kind of thing or does it not matter to you and you don't know what the big deal is so I, obviously it's a big deal to me because i'm gonna do a whole vlog about it right now because of besser because of mckayev's injuries the whole right side of the canucks was, was kind of messed up so you get basically four new right wingers today or at least four different spots so all four four lines were affected so now up top with miller and pearson connor garland as many people predicted he slid into that first line role so miller Pearson and Garland. On Pedersen's line, it's Pedersen, Kuzmenko, and it was Niels Hoglander, who we talked about maybe sliding into a Bester spot, but no, Hoglander gets placed on the, the de facto Canucks second line with Petey and Kuzmenko. The third line, there's still Horvat, there's still Pod Colson, but then Curtis Lazar got bumped up from the fourth line to play right wing on that third line. And then of course that leaves a spot on the fourth line, Lazar's spot. So it was still Jason Dickinson, it was still Dakota Joshua, and then it was Phil DiGiuseppe filling in. So picture this, the right wingers, Garland, Hoglander, Lazar, and DiGiuseppe. Let's talk about each of those lines really quickly. Miller and Pearson and Garland, that seems to make the most sense. Garland is the best of all the remaining right wingers now that Bester's out. So you put Garland up on your top line to play with your most effective center right now in JT Miller. Second line, of course, you keep Petey and Kuzminko together. They looked really good in their game on Sunday. And then Hoglander can play with them. He's played with Petey before, and he brings a lot of the same, uh, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of speed. And I think that line could do really, really well. And then he's got yeah, at least a veteran in Pedersen. Can't believe we're calling Pedersen a veteran, but a veteran Pedersen to work with. Your third line, you keep Horvat together with Pod Colson, and then Lazar, who's also a good skater who plays hard. So that becomes kind of like your your heavier line in Horvat, Pod Colson, and Lazar. And then fourth line, you keep Dickinson, you keep Joshua. And I talked about Phil DiGiuseppe being the most impressive of the atmosphere guys on Sunday night, showing a lot of speed, a lot of, uh, you know, good speed for his size, uh, a lot of effort. So you put him on the fourth line, typical fourth line player. So those are the lines up front. On the D pairings, Tyler Myers was absent. So this is how it looked. You had still Oliver ekman Larson and Quinn Hughes as your first pairing, but now it can't be DeKaiser and Myers anymore. So Danny DeKaiser was lined up with... Tucker Pullman. Pullman was with Travis Dermott, so Travis Dermott lined up with Kyle Burrows on the right side, and then you still had Rathbone and Shen. So the two that didn't switch were Rathbone and Shen and OEL Myers, uh, sorry, OEL and Hughes, but because Myers wasn't there, now it was DeKaiser with Pullman, and then Travis Dermott with Kyle Burrows. So when you look at those, you could probably say that the dermott Burrows pairing looked to be the fourth pairing, of course, OEL and Hughes was the number one pairing. So does that make DeKaiser and Pullman number two and Rathbone Shen number three? Or maybe it's the other way around. 
But that's how they lined up. So Rathbone and Shen getting another look together, at least in practice today. Tyler Myers absent. I don't, don't know if it's a maintenance day. I don't know uh, what the Canucks are going to say about him later. Actually, I don't know what they're going to say about him, what they're going to say about Mokayev. And then, unfortunate news, Travis Dermott apparently got shaken up at practice. So much so where um, reports were that he was uh, shaking, leaving the ice. And I, they're not, I'm not saying shaking, like being taken on a stretcher, but maybe just uh, either his arm or his leg or maybe just his, his whole body. So we hope that that is obviously not serious. But yes, uh, Harm Dial, Jeff Patterson, Thomas Trance, all those that were in attendance at the Canucks practice at UBC said that, uh, that, um, that Travis Dermott was taking off the ice and he was shaking, uh, walking down the tunnel. So hopefully, um, I, I don't want to speculate, hopefully he was shaking something out and it, it won't be that serious and he was being held out for precautionary. But anytime you have to leave the ice and go down the tunnel, um, that is not a good thing. So I don't want to sound alarm bells, Canucks fans, but conceivably, depending on what McCabe's injury is, what Meyer's injury or not injury is, and what Dermott's injury or not injury is, we could be out four of our top 18 skaters, two forwards in Besser and McCabe, and two defensemen in Myers and Travis Dermott. Now again, hopefully we'll hear a bit more about all these guys either later today or tomorrow. We expect to hear about McCabe and Myers probably today, and Dermott, they might not know anything until a day or two. But again, we hope it's not serious at all. So I'm not going to sit here and say it's typical Canucks or typical Canucks luck. It is bad luck for sure. Um, we know about the Besser injury, but now we're waiting on news, on word about Mikheyev, Myers, and Dermot. And I, I get it. Guys are rusty. Guys are still getting into game shape. But you hate to see injuries to any players, especially your own players, and especially on a team where we were hoping for a very quick start to the season and, and uh, picking off where the Canucks left off at the end of last season, the last two-thirds of the season with Bruce Boudreaux. So Canucks fans, in the comments below, a couple things. Talk about, do you take great interest and intrigue in line combos and deep pairings? Obviously, I do. I vlog about them all the time because I think uh, the numbers show that people are really interested in that kind of thing as long as, by extension, the injuries that led to these changes. So does that interest you or does it not interest you? And number two, um, do you think the Canucks? Uh, do you think the Canucks are jinxed? Honestly, when I, I don't believe in jinxes. I don't believe in superstition. But this is pretty bad to start off if we're indeed out four regulars after only the first couple days of practice. Let me know in the comments below how you're feeling with this news right now. I love to read and reply best as I can. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate and Perform and Transform Personal Training and Weight Loss. Thank you to Legendary Lucas Gates, Legendary Justin Credible, Legendary Andrew Chang. Hall of Fame and franchise members, thanks for your membership as well and support. And thanks to all of you for watching me, watching these videos and continuing to help me grow this channel. As always, subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, leave a tip, a super thanks if you'd like to, um, upgrade your membership or become a member if you'd like to, and definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to. And if you made it this far, eight and a half minutes in, you know that Tuesday night's my bowling night. So put in the words, wish me luck, but put in the word turkey, T-U-R-K-E-Y, uh, you're not calling me a turkey. You're not proclaiming what you're going to eat for dinner. But a turkey is three strikes in a row in bowling. And that's what I'm going to try and get to do tonight. So join me tonight, 11 p.m. I'll not only update my bowling, but more importantly, we'll talk more about these Canucks lineup changes and potential injuries. 11 o'clock tonight, right here on YouTube. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.